Hello people, I am Bharat Acharya. Welcome to a new video. So in today's video, we are going to do floating point number conversions. Last video, we saw how floating point numbers are represented. The IEEE 754-32-bit format also called single precision, also called short reel. And the 64-bit format, double precision called long reel. So you have seen the theory answer. Now, you may get that as a theory question or you may get it as a numerical. Both are 10 out of 10 answers. Theory question, that is exactly what the examiner wants, so it will give you full marks. Numerical, even better. This is something that's going to give you 10 marks like this if you know how to do it. Okay, so I'm going to solve two sums. Uh, there are only two variations that can happen in this sum. Either they'll give you a decimal number and ask you to convert it into one of the floating point formats or they'll give you a hexadecimal number. These are the only things that can happen. So you're going to solve both of them, one decimal, one hexadecimal. The steps are, first convert the given number into binary. Listen to the steps properly. First step, convert the number into binary. Second step, normalize the number. Third step, Calculate the biased exponent, you know exponents have to be biased. Fourth step, convert the biased exponent also into binary. Fifth step, substitute in the required format, okay. Draw the whole format, just don't show a series of zeros and ones and tell the examiner go figure out what I have done. Show it in the format, make it easier for the examiner to correct, that automatically helps you getting full marks because it just makes it easy for everyone. Now, okay, so our first question is. Convert the number, this is how it will be there in the paper, convert the number 14.125 decimal into single precision or double precision, whatever they want to ask you. The procedure is the same, it's just the bias value changes, the procedure is the same. Now, first step, whatever number they give you, the first thing to do is convert it into binary. Now, when they give you a decimal number, that to a fractional number, you have done this in lower semesters, I'm sure. You know how to convert this in binary, if you don't, watch it here. You cannot convert this in one step. Okay, this is not possible in a single step. You got to do it in two parts. This is done by your usual divide by two method. This is done by multiply by two method. I will show you both. 14. Now you know how to convert 14 into binary. We have seen enough examples of that. See 8, 4, 2, 1. So 14 is 8 plus 4 plus 2. There is no 1. So this is 14, 1, 1, 1, 0. You know that, right? So even if it was a bigger number, you know how to just draw a table and do it. That divide by two method. So this is your 14 point. Now how do you get the point 0.125? That's the important one. 0 0.125. Keep multiplying the part after the fraction by 2. Don't multiply anything before that. Always take this as 0. So 0 0.125 multiplied by 2 is 0 0.25. 0 0.25. Because it's still 0 point something, the result of this step is 0. Are you listening? The result of this step is 0. Now, Take the part after the point, even if it was one point something, the result of this step is one, but you will always take the part after the point. So here it's still zero, 0 0.25 multiplied by two will give you 0 0.5. Again, it is zero point something, so the result of this step is zero. 0 0.5 multiplied by two will give you 1.0. The result of this step is one. You stop when you get 1.0 because going beyond this is redundant. What's gonna happen? 0.0 into two is for zero. 0.0 into two is zero. That will happen up to infinity. So when you get a perfect one, you stop. Students say, sir, what if you don't get a perfect one? That's a valid question. It will not always be a perfect one. Calculate up to four places. That is acceptable by everybody. Five places if you want to impress the examiner. Six places you're pushing it. No need to do more than that. Okay. Nobody really cares for that kind. That much of an accuracy. So four to five places is good. If you can foresee that, yeah, you're going to get a perfect one in the sixth place, then go ahead and do the sixth one. Otherwise, it's not really required. Anyway, so we stop here because you got a perfect 1.0. How do you take it? <sighs> Top to bottom. So this becomes 0, 0, 001. Okay. So this was your first step converting this number into binary. Did you understand how this happened? Okay. Once you got your number in binary, second step, normalize the number. What is the rule of normalization? There should be only one non-zero digit to the left of the point. Move the point one, two, three places so that there is only one non-zero digit to the left of the point. Make it basically one point something. So now this number becomes 1.110001 multiplied by 1, 2, 3. 2 raised to 3. Yeah, 2 raised to, correct? It's binary, it's base 2. And because the number is positive, minus 1 raised to 0. It was 14, the number was 14. So minus 1 raised to 0. This is called the normalized form. This is the sign. This is the mantissa. This is the exponent. What exponent? True exponent. Now calculate the biased exponent. Bias exponent is true exponent plus bias. True exponent is 3. Bias value for single precision bias value is, is, come on, come on, yep, 127. So this is 130. 
this is your third step. Now this 130 is a decimal number. In the format, everything has to be binary. So that's your fourth step. Convert your biased exponent into binary. 130. I can do it orally also, but just telling you how to do it. 130 divided by 2 is, you remember this, right? You've learned this in some, some way or the other. If you're not, see how it is done. 130, keep dividing by 2, okay? So 130 divided by 2 is 65, remainder is 0. Divide by 2, 32, remainder is 1, divide by 2, 16, remainder is 0, 8, 0, 4, 0, 2, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. Tell me, did you understand? Take this bottom to top. So this will be 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. That is your bias exponent. 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. This is in binary form. Tell me, did you understand this? Now, you got everything. You got your sign, you got your exponent, you got your mantis. I just put them in the format. Like I said initially, don't write a series of zeros and ones and tell the examiner, go figure out. Show the format. You want full marks, present your answer correctly. Sign is 1 bit, exponent is 8 bit, mantissa is 23 bits. That's your single precision 32 bit format. Okay. So, sign. Because the number is positive, sign bit is 0. So, sign is 0. Exponent 1 0 0 0 0 0 1 0. 1 0 0 0 0 0 1 0. Mantissa. Mantissa. You take the part after the point. Double 1 double 0 0 1. Double one, double zero, zero one. The remaining part will be zeros. Remember, I've told you the extra zeros will come on the right. That was your sum. Can you believe this? People run away from this. Tell me if you get this, wouldn't you want this in your paper? This gives you 10 marks like this. Even if it comes for 5 marks. I've never seen it come, coming for 5 marks. It's always a 10 mark question, at least in Bombay University. But even if it comes for 5 marks, come on. It was so easy. Convert the number to binary, calculate, normalize the number, calculate the bias exponent, convert the bias exponent into binary and just put it all together in the format. Uh, because COA and microprocessors are very close-knit subjects. Many people who teach COA teach microprocessors and vice versa. Even I do. I teach both of them. I teach OS. Again, that's a natural continuation of the subject. In microprocessors, also you have this kind of question. Over there, examiners expect you to convert this result back to hexadecimal. It is not compulsory. What I'm doing is blue color is not compulsory. If you want to stop here, stop here. That's great. If you're doing the next step, do it right. Otherwise, don't do it. Don't make a mess of it. You finish the job. Your sum is over. In case your college teacher insists, if you remember, yeah, in our college, the teacher did like this, then go ahead and do this. What do you want to do? Combine them into sets of four. Now, normally when you do that, you start from the LSB. But because we have not finished the number, you not get the correct position to start from. No fret, no problem. This is a 32 bit number, 32 bits per bit is perfectly divisible by 4. So even if you start from the MSB, it's all cool. So start from the MSB, make them into sets of 4. 0, 1, 0, 0. 0, 0, 0, 0. 0, 0, 0, 1. 0, 1, 1, 0. 0, 0, 1, 0. This is 0, 1, 0, 0. That is 4. 0, 0, 0, 1. That is 1. 0, 1, 1, 0 is 6, 0, 0, 1, 0 is 2, remaining are 0, 0, 0, 0, 32 bits, so 8 digits, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, this is your same number in hexadecimal, it is not compulsory, don't do it if your college teacher is not doing it, you might just make a mistake, it's not compulsory, if your college teacher insists then do it, what you have to do is make them into sets of 4, it's again, it's not difficult, just do it correctly, that's it. So that was your number. Now, what can be a variation this, in this? I have never seen it. I've been teaching the subject since 18 years. I've never seen it. But it's always there in my mind and it keeps bothering me. How, how come no examiner ever thought of this? They could ask you a negative number. Suppose they say convert minus 14.125. Don't be a fool in taking two's complement over here. There is no two's complement concept in floating point numbers. Are you clear? No two's complement. Minus 14.5 or 14 will be the same. 14, blah, blah, blah. All that will happen is sign bit will become 1. Do you understand? Instead of sign bit being 0, sign bit will be 1. That's the only thing. So here the sign bit will be 1. That is if they say the number is negative. As I said, I have never seen it. So great, but just wanted you to be prepared with it. There's always the first time. Maybe you are the lucky one. <laughs> Next one. Convert 2A3BH hexadecimal. Instead of giving you a decimal number, if you're learning this uh, topic for microprocessors, if mainly it's for microprocessor, if you have UP as a subject along with CO, many universities teach both subjects together. This is how the question will come in microprocessors. They'll give you a hexadecimal number and convert it into single precision. The only thing that will be is this is easier. Your first step now becomes easy. Convert the number into binary. That's our first step, right? Hex to binary is straightforward. 2A3B, every digit will have 4, 4 bits. 
So this is 0, 0, 1, 0 is 2, 1, 0, 1, 0 is A, 0, 0, 1, 1 is 3, 1, 0, 1, 1 is B. Correct? Now what? Normalize the number. This is the point. Move the point. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So 1 point 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1 multiplied by 2 raised to 13. Are you with me so far? 2 raised to 13 and this is minus 1 raised to 0. This is your normalized form. This is the sign. This is the mantissa. This is the true exponent. Calculate the biased exponent. That is true exponent 13 plus bias 127. That is 140 now. Instead of 130 in the previous sum, this is 140. Okay. Fourth step. Convert the biased exponent into binary. 140. Let's do it over here. 140 divided by 2, 70, 0, 35, 0, 17, 1, you write, so 2 into 17 is 34, correct, right, be with me, uh, 2 into 8 is 16, so 1, 4, 0, 2, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, double 1, double 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, double 1, double 0, this is your number in binary, now substitute in the format, sign, number is positive, sign is 0, exponent, this is your biased exponent 1000110 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. mantissa this is your mantissa 01010011111 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, followed by all zeros okay if you get the time make them into sets of 4 what will it be 4 6 2 8 e c 4 6 2 8 e c 0 0 h don't do it orally okay i live and breathe this subject okay i can do it orally please don't do it orally properly with a pencil or pen whatever just mark out four four bits and do it properly if you're doing this subject this bit if, this step if you don't want to do it no problem it's optional the remaining part is necessary this is optional it's just better presentation of the answer if you want keep show it like this or keep it here it's fine all textbooks stop here this is just an extra step done by some university teachers so just thought of doing that Okay, so that's it. So if you get a sum to convert a number into a floating point number, you know why this was so easy? I'll tell you why. You might be, oh, it's so easy. That is because you understood the floating point formats. People who don't understand the formats never attempt the sum. They just leave that whole floating point chapter altogether. But if you understood the formats, yeah, that was a long video. It made it that really made us think. This was pretty easy. This is this is fun to do. But that's what that's what the sums are. Once you know the concept behind it, the sums are very easy. Okay, I hope you understood it. Wish you all the best. Do well.